after Ramadan, many people feel this withdrawal because every day you were fasting, you enjoyed the suhoor, you enjoyed the iftar, you probably went to the masjid, you had a group of friends came together, you had a beautiful evening, you spent time in taraweeh, you might have sat with your friends thereafter, some people have ice cream, some people have tea and coffee, desserts, and subhanallah, that entire month went by in such a beautiful way. Here we are at the end of Ramadan, now what? Well, the important thing is Allah Almighty made things compulsory in Ramadan that are not compulsory out of Ramadan and we did those things and we tried to do a few more things. So I'm still going to stick to what Allah has made compulsory out of Ramadan. Number one is I'm not going to miss my prayers because that is a pillar of Islam, such a solid pillar that it distinguishes a believer from a non-believer. You need to pray. So I will try my best to fulfill it in the best possible way. Secondly, I am going to maintain consistency regarding certain things. I may not read as much Quran because in Ramadan I read a bit more, it being a blessed month and I was earning more rewards. So I read more in Ramadan. I'm not going to read as much out of Ramadan, but I'm going to do a portion a day. The adhkar or the remembrance of Allah post every farad prayer. I'm going to keep that up. I'm going to try my best to maintain good family ties. I'm not going to give up my beautiful dress code that I developed in Ramadan that was compliant to what Allah wanted. Because unfortunately what happens is people come out of Ramadan and suddenly they're a totally different person. You don't rec recognize the person. Why? The dress codes change completely. Well, if that dress code is within what Allah has ordained or permitted, it's okay. No one needs to say you must wear a specific thing. No. But the framework is built by Allah. It is set by Allah. So if you are wearing something that is within what Allah has ordained, mashallah, you're doing a good job and may Allah Almighty help us to continue to improve in our dress code. But after Ramadan, there is a statement of the predecessors that they used to state what a lost people who worship Allah only in the month of Ramadan without bearing in mind that the same Allah who was in Ramadan is here out of Ramadan. You know, what a bad nation or, or what, what bad people who only worship Allah in the month of Ramadan or they don't worship Allah except in the month of Ramadan. We don't want to be those. We want to be people who are trying our best. Ramadan is over, but I'm going to try to fast twice a week and I'm going to try to fast the 13th, 14th, 15th that we've heard about so many times of every lunar month. I'm going to keep up quite a few things that I have maintained during the month. During the month, some of it was compulsory. Now it may not be compulsory. And you know what? Rightly so, Allah knows I need to relax a bit. I need to enjoy perhaps recreation. But has my life changed a little bit? Inshallah, this after Ramadan, you know, I'm going to maintain all the goodness that I have. I'm not going to lose it. When you build a bank balance, for example, and it's just an example that I'm giving, you built your balance and you have thousands of gold coins, for example, and you've, mashallah, tabarakallah, built them over the whole month. And suddenly you come out, you're swearing, you're cheating, you're, you're hurting people, you're deceiving, you're slandering, you're backbiting, you're sinning one after the other, whatever it may be. You've gone back to your bad habits. You're depleting the massive mountain that you accumulated through the month of Ramadan. You accumulated a mountain of gold. Now suddenly you're depleting it. What was the point? Do you really think that's what Allah wanted from you? Worship Allah for a month and then forget about him for 11 months. Come back Ramadan, forget about it. We need to be consistent. I remember meeting a brother who told me that, you know, I've left everything, I've put it aside, all the sins and all that. And you know what? After Eid, inshallah, we'll pick it up. But what did you just say? After Eid, you're going to pick up your sins and redo or, or go back. That's strange. That's totally absurd. It reminds me of the hadith that says, you know, shaitan is tied in Ramadan. Now, that narration uh, doesn't specify all the shayateen, but the main chiefs of shaitan are tied up in Ramadan. The little ones are still running around doing their business. However, 
it was said that the way people operate, uh, you know, some of the people have just mentioned, and I mean, I can say it now too, the way people operate, it seems like shaitan got you wound prior to Ramadan, and then he was tied, and you kept unwinding, doing his, his things throughout the month of Ramadan. And now that Ramadan has ended, he's caught you exactly where he left you. If that was the case, what did we achieve from Ramadan? Let it not be. Inshallah, this being the last of this beautiful, beautiful series that we've had on a daily basis, a journey, trying to make the most of this month with beautiful words of guidance and, and advice, throughout the month, I ask Allah Almighty that all these words do not go in vain. And inshallah, they have benefited us. And inshallah, they have impacted us in a way that we've changed things in our lives. Remember, we're all in need of the mercy of Allah. All of us need forgiveness. And every single one of us will be forgiven by Allah the minute we seek His forgiveness, genuinely. You're genuine, you seek forgiveness, you regret what you did, you're promising Allah you're not going to do it again. Allah says it is wiped out. Together with that, when things happen to change our lives in a beautiful, positive way, Wallahi, you begin to feel the blessings of Allah in your life. You begin to witness the goodness that Allah has bestowed upon you. You appreciate the favors of Allah and recognize them. You appreciate the halal in your life to the degree that you don't even incline towards haram. But when you haven't made an effort, you incline straight towards haram and halal has no value in your eyes because as it is, you don't have a relationship with Allah or it's very weak or you couldn't be bothered or you allowed shaitan to bring you down for a long time. So if shaitan brought you down once, twice, thrice, and you quickly came up and you made amends and you sought forgiveness of Allah, you have a lot of hope. But when you've allowed shaitan to bring you down for a prolonged time, there is still hope, but it might be much more difficult to get you off, to say, listen, come back up. What Allah does is he makes people go through really tough times. Tough times to the degree that they need help and they need, whether it's their health or their wealth or their jobs or their relationships, whatever it may be, anything. You need such help that nobody can offer it to you and he makes you turn to him. And when you turn to him, that turning is absolutely amazing. It is such that he brings you down with into the position of prostration with humility. And subhanallah, you feel the connection instantly. Shaitan could have worked with someone for 70 years. One beautiful moment with Allah and all of that can be wiped out. So remember this, my brothers and sisters, let's make an effort. Let's make an effort such that we become the best of people. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was loved by everyone. He was a person whom people to this day are very unfair with him. They say words that are not true about him. They spread rumor. They try to find fault. They lie. All of that has not affected his reputation whatsoever. In fact, every single day, there are so many people who are accepting him as the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day, there are people entering the fold of Islam. Yet, if you look at those who are trying still to tarnish his image, there are many. They have not succeeded and they will not succeed because Allah Almighty has protected the reputation of the most blessed and beloved prophet of his, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we ask Allah on this beautiful day to make us true followers of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to help us, to guide us, to bring us towards goodness, to resolve our matters and problems, to grant us blessings, to open our doors, to have accepted from us the month of Ramadan, to forgive our shortcomings, to help us throughout the rest of the year, to help our children, those who are not married, we ask Allah to grant them spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. And those who are married, we ask Allah to grant them happiness, bliss and joy, and to grant them offspring who will be the coolness of their eyes. We ask Allah Almighty to bless those who are struggling across the globe with ease 
and to take them out of their difficulties and suffering. People all over the world who are struggling, the list is endless. We could name Afghanistan, Palestine, Iraq, wherever else it is, so many countries, subhanAllah, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, people are struggling for different reasons. We ask Allah to alleviate the struggles and the sufferings. In fact, even in first world countries, people are struggling for many reasons. May Allah Almighty assist every single person.